Good morning, Thailand Thursday program. It is the 2nd of September, second of the days of freedom as we're able to randomly go to restaurants and things back in the dark red zones. Morning, Jay. Good morning, Tim. You're in a weird mood today. Am I? You certainly are. I'm excited. If only people could see what happened before we turned the cameras on. <laughs> All right, uh, plenty to talk about today. We are going to be meandering down the Venice of the East, the canals of Bangkok today. Yes, it's finally here after popular <laughs> demand. Um, I did promise a, a couple of weeks back that we would be doing a story on Bangkok being the Venice of the East. And uh, today is finally the day that uh, I will talk about that short story. I think all the rain we're having around the country has brought us to this time when uh, there are canals running just uh, all over the place at the moment, whether you like it or not. Anyway, we should start with today's COVID figures. Right, Tim. Uh, today in Thailand, we had 262 COVID deaths, um, 14,956 new COVID infections, 2,718 of them were probable cases. 17,936 people have been discharged from hospitals. However, currently we still have 163,680 people still in care in field hospitals and hospitals across Thailand. 4,841 people are still in serious conditions in ICUs and 1,030 are on artificial respiration. Now those numbers are decreasing um, even ever so slightly. Yeah, ever so slightly. Yes. Uh, the number of deaths is still very high too, so um, we're still not out of this and even though it looks like things are slowly opening up and it seems the Thai government are just determined to open things up, Yes, that uh, we've still got some numbers that are showing that um, a lot of people are still suffering under this current virus. So, And in the news coming up, uh, I'll also talk about a new variant, the Mu variant. Have you heard of that? Uh, not yet. There are five uh, variants uh, under consideration, or uh, there are five variants that the WHO have, have noted are under observation or something. And this Mu variant is a new one oh my. as they're moving through the, uh, the Greek alphabet. Uh, certainly been raining. Getting to work at the moment, yes. uh, it's very, very, it's just been raining the last couple of weeks. That's right. Heavy rain as well. It's not just a slight drizzle. The roads are wet. Um, it's raining while we're driving. So everyone's driving slowly, carefully. But it's been drabby weather to say the least. Drabby. There we go. So if you're wondering what today's weather is like around Thailand, it's drabby. Confirmed. And there is plenty of, uh, of moisture around, so we'll get to the weather a bit later as well. But we'll have a quick break, then I'll be back with the main news stories. And then, time to get out your oars and we'll meander our way down the clongs of the Venice of the East on Good Morning Thailand. Ending the nightly curfew in dark red provinces is under consideration. A passing comment from the PM Prayut chan cha yesterday before heading back into Parliament. 29 provinces, including Bangkok, are still classified as dark red zones under maximum control. The CSA has lifted restrictions in the dark red zones from yesterday, allowing restaurants to offer dine-in services and interprovincial public transport to resume. But the 924 stay-at-home order remains in effect. Prout says the move to lift the curfew, or at least reduce the hours, is under consideration, and officials are closely monitoring the current infection rates. But he added he's concerned that once the curfew is lifted and restrictions are eased, many will flock to bar venues during the nightly hours, potentially spread COVID again. The first COVID-19 clusters in the latest and most deadly wave of the virus in Thailand were reported at bars and nightclubs in late March around the Tonglo and Ekamai area, with clusters continuing to be found at bars and nightclubs, entertainment venues have become the boogeyman of spreading COVID-19 in Thailand. On the first day of the four-day censure debate where multiple cabinet members as well as PM Prayut chan cha are facing votes of no confidence, the Minister of Public Health, Anaton, has responded in defence of himself and in praise of the government's apparently competent handling of the COVID-19 crisis. The minister walked through the COVID-19 situation and his vaccine procurement efforts since the end of last year and painted a rosy picture of the government's strategy and success. 
Anaton also claimed there was no corruption since he became minister and that he has not wasted any money from the public funds or siphoned any for himself, but that Thailand has greatly benefited from the warmer relationship with China. Thailand's reliance on Sinovac has frequently come under fire, but Anaton came to the defence of the Chinese-made vaccine, saying it was high quality and that it was highly effective. He stressed that the emergence of the Delta variant is neither his or Sinovac's fault. He also addressed criticism of pricing and dealings with China, saying that Sinovac was the fastest option to get vaccines into Thailand and that all financial dealings were done with transparency. Meanwhile, the PM Prayut chan cha is denying rumours regarding a cabinet reshuffle and a House dissolution, saying that he intended to stay on until the government completes its four-year term in 2023. He said yesterday, such thoughts have not crossed my mind. Whoever spoke about it should be careful regardless of their aim to stir unrest during the no confidence debate or whatever. His comments come after he admitted he'd asked his deputy PM Prawit Wongsawan and lead fixer in the ruling playing Pracharat party in a line chat about a rumour that MPs from some coalition partners were plotting to vote against him in the no confidence debate and pressure him to reshuffle the cabinet. Police have taken into custody two suspects accused of beating a 23-year-old coffee shop employee in Sirasha in Jombri on Monday. The pair of attackers faced charges of assaulting the shop worker in the middle of the workday, with other staff witnessing the incident turning themselves in as well. The suspects were identified as a 29 and 25 year old brothers. They surrendered to police earlier yesterday afternoon. As the victim had suspected, the attacker admitted the beating was a fit of jealousy, saying he saw the coffee shop employee chatting with his girlfriend. The victim has asked police to press charges against the two attackers and police kept both in custody whilst filing assault charges. The victim was taken to hospital and had to be treated for multiple injuries as a result of the attack. Pattaya police have raided a suspected gambling operation. Four people were arrested, consisting of three suspected gamblers and the homeowner. The house was in Nong Pru. The raid is a result of the police being tipped off by a concerned citizen that suspected the house was being used as an illegal gambling den. The three alleged gamblers and the owner of the property were arrested and then brought to the Pattaya police station for further legal proceedings. Police say the operation had been operational for about three months. They also noted that the gambling den links up with an even larger gambling operation in Thailand. By now, news of the Delta variant, a much more contagious strain of COVID-19 that spread around the world, is well understood. But watch out, Mu, a new COVID-19 variant that may be resistant to vaccines, is making headlines as a new variant of interest, according to the World Health Organization. The Mu variant was first identified in Colombia eight months ago, though it's been known since January. Just yesterday, the WHO officially classified it as a variant of interest as part of their weekly bulletin. B1621 is commonly known as the Mu variant after the 12th letter of the Greek alphabet, after the WHO announced a shift at the end of May to Greek names to avoid stigma with geographic names and confusion with technical scientific names. Variants of interest are strains that are potentially less dangerous, less widespread or whose level of severity and transmissibility is not yet known. They include the Eta variant found around the world, the Iota variant first identified in the UK, the Kappa variant found in India and the Lambda variant first seen in Peru. The Mu variant would be the fifth variant of interest currently on the WHO list. And Thailand will start collecting value-added tax from foreign technology companies and expects to raise at least 5 billion baht in additional revenue each year. Foreign platforms providing electronic services in Thailand will have to register for VAT payments, according to a senior finance ministry official. The VAT would cover e-commerce companies and advertising from Facebook and Google, intermediaries such as ride-hailing apps like Grab, and streaming services such as Netflix. <laughs> right, back with Jay when we come back from this break with more Good Morning Thailand. 
You're on Good Morning Thailand, our Thursday program. Jay and me taking you through all the main news stories of the day. When I was up in uh, Bangkok, or and I hopefully getting back to Bangkok soon, uh, I used to stay sometimes about uh, two or three kilometres away from work. And the way I'd get to work would be along one of the, the klongs, oh, the wow, okay. San Sib Klong, which mm-hmm. is one of the main ones that runs uh, east-west in Bangkok. Mm-hmm. And I loved it. I thought it was a really nice way to go to work. I used to think, oh, I don't want to fall in there. Yeah. <laughs> and the way that people used to get on and off the boat, uh, I used to think, why are more people not falling in? Because mm-hmm. the, the, sometimes the person There's driving... Gap between... The it's not so much and... the gap, it's just the, uh, the, the driver pilot i don't know what are they called the people that drive the captain of the ferry boats wouldn't necessarily wait until everybody had fully stepped on Mm -hmm. and made their way they just step on and off he'd go (laughs) so anyway i think probably more people fall in than we'd like to uh, admit but uh you don't want to be eating fish out of those clongs but anyway they do have a, a long and rich history jay right it's now time for me to set the tone and bring on my pretentious narrator voice um (laughs) <laughs> so, let me take you back to the early 19th century. As distinct from your normal pretentious voice. That's right. Okay. Now, usually in Bangkok, um, you know, we have icons such as tuk-tuk, sky trains, traffic. That's what you think of normally when you think about Bangkok. However, we do have a hidden gem in Bangkok. And those are our klongs, which are moats and rivers. Uh, and also our boat system. We still actually have a current boat system in Bangkok that, like you said, a lot of people use to um, go on their way to work, get back home and use it to travel across Bangkok. And some Um, of them are electric too. That's right. Let me take you back to the early days of Bangkok and the boat system. Cue music, Tim. Okay. Many of Thailand's cities and towns in the old days were traditionally protected by moats, and Bangkok's first waterways were dug for this purpose. In 1782, King Rama I created the first moat. He ordered the digging of a moat and linked it with the Chao Phraya River. By 1850, the second and third parallel canals had been dug and the city started to grow. And irrigation, drainage and transport became the canal's primary usage. Throughout the 19th century, the system of the canals was improved and expanded. Horseshoe bends in the Chao Phraya River were cut off to shorten the travel times for people to get from one place to another, to get to work, to get to places, basically. Well, I noticed that the, some, uh, there was one five-kilometer diversion mm-hmm. off the Chao Phraya that they made to less than two kilometers by right. um, yeah, just uh, sort of rerouting the river. And, and the canal and the network stretched thousands and hundreds of kilometers. I mean, it's difficult to imagine that now, but back then it was a main mode of transport. And it was basically, you know, the lifeblood of the city. It connected houses, public spaces, temples. It just served as the corridors from getting from one place to the other. There was no way, no other faster or better way to, tra- uh, to transport. And commercial goods were used for transporting. And floating markets so there were more floating markets than land markets which would be impossible to imagine now because now it's become more of a tourist destination oh let's go to the floating market however back then that's all people if they wanted to buy groceries if they wanted to buy food or even go shopping in a way they would go to the floating markets now however european influence in the late 19th century and the early 20th centuries uh, slowly shifted Bangkok to a road-based transport system. Diplomats, merchants requested roads for their horses and carriages. New construction materials like cement and cast iron became readily available. And as Bangkok's population grew, expansion became centered around cities and eventually leading to what Bangkok is now known and seen as. So filling in the canals and making roads instead. Yep, and and today many of the klongs have been filled in with cement and made uh, roads. Some of them, people don't even realize that they were klongs before. And, um, but a massive network of waterways still crisscrosses the city. Yes. Um, Even now, each day, thousands of commuters um, travel by these motorized boats, like you said, uh, on the canals, on the Chao Phraya River, which runs through basically the entire city. One of the major canals, actually, we were, that you actually said and we were talking about earlier, is the Klong San, connects, which connects the Chao Phraya River to Prachinburi Province and Cha Chong Sao. 
Well, I believe that used to go all that canal used to go almost all the way to the Cambodian border. Yeah. So it's obviously a lot shorter these days. It's seventy two kilometers long. Wow. And it passes through twenty one districts and it connects almost to another hundred smaller canals. So I mean it's it's the it's one of the main ones in, in Thailand. And however, like you said, these canals can often be smelly, it's clearly polluted, you know, you don't wanna fall in the water you don't want any i don't even know if fish can survive in that water well, some, some imagine, of the canals are absolutely you know imagine the early days when there wasn't a sewage system <laughs> yes. and the, everything was pumped into those canals oh I'd, they would have been a joy i'd rather not imagine that yeah yeah <laughs> but um yeah it's more you know it became more of a cultural and historical thing however bangkok is sinking on an average of three centimeters per year so mm. Even though this, thi- uh, even though the canals have kind of become a more of a historical thing and are only used by some few people, it could be the future of Bangkok, and that was one of the reasons I decided to do a short, brief story on the Venice of the East, Bangkok. It might be coming back, Tim. I wonder how they were uh, powered back in the the early. 19th century. I mean, they wouldn't have had motors then. No. So how did they get around? They were, I guess, but those with you know, oars. Well, it, slaves. I, I guess it was called the Venice of the East, possibly because they were also using those, you know, the long those, sticks. The long sticks, basically. Yeah. If you're one of the people who were like, you know, one of the, the king's servants doing mm-hmm. the rowing, you, you wouldn't want the king to arrive one day and say you wanted to go water skiing. Yeah. Or, or they be had, a worry, wouldn't? Yeah. Or the taxi drivers are just using like those paddles proper long paddles to move the boat. I mean, I wasn't there, <laughs> however. Would have been a romantic time as you sort of slowly saunter down the canals of Bangkok and smell that raw sewage. Oh, yes. Okay, so thank you very much. A bit of a trip down the Venice of the East, written by many poets who have come to wax lyrical about them over the years. But uh, as we said uh, at Another time, there have been a lot of Venices of the East. Yep, um, I think announced. there are about 30 in Asia. <laughs> yes, so uh, it became a sort of a popular term to use. Anyway, very interesting. Let's check the, uh, the regional headlines. We'll sure. come and, uh, back and have a, a talk about more things happening around Thailand today on Good Morning Thailand. China beat Taiwan to the punch on Wednesday in announcing the delivery of the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine. Taiwan has blamed China for blocking an original order from the German firm earlier this year, which Beijing has angrily denied. Japan has reported a new contamination case involving Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine. This is the fourth incident in the last week which is threatening to slow the country's vaccination program. China's Asian Affairs envoy has finished an unannounced week-long visit to Myanmar in which they discussed with Myanmar's junta leader on the country's political future. 12.8% of Filipinos are fully vaccinated. There are four months left to meet the country's population's protection goal. Officials are racing to fully vaccinate some 50 to 60 million people to achieve population protection. Indonesia is investigating a suspected security flaw in a COVID-19 test and trace app that left exposed personal information and the health status of 1.3 million people. Hello and welcome back. You're watching Good Morning Thailand with me and Tim. Okay, time to uh, have our only in Thailand, a little moment of uh, hilarity and mirth. So this first one, I. I've seen plenty of these. Mm -hmm. Seems to be a place where they're going to put a crosswalk or if you want to call it a zebra crossing, whatever you call it in your particular uh, part of the world. But some of them just don't go quite as well as they should. Yes. Well, I don't know what went wrong here, but a lot of things went wrong here. And I'm not going (laughs) to lie. I have seen a lot of, you know, inaccessible roads and what what, what would we call this, Tim? Uh, I'd call this just a, a mistake. Okay. <laughs> that they've sort of, I don't know, the, the, the ramp down, maybe the thought, we're going to provide uh, wheelchair access to this yeah. uh, crosswalk. However, it, it ends up in a great big divot that you're going to have to be lifted over. Uh, and then on the other side, well, <laughs> they said you can't park there, but uh, I don't know. that That's a crosswalk that shouldn't be there. Let's go to the next one. This one looks like an interesting way of... Um, 
eating breakfast? Could you, could you explain this to me? Well, um, I can only imagine that they ran out of plates and possibly the gardener uh, decided to take matter into his own hands and said, I'm hungry, I want to have lunch and this is what I'm going to do. He cut his water bucket in half and that's how he did it. I've seen a lot of fancy restaurants in the last couple of years deliver food on all sorts of things, uh, <coughs> sizzling grills, metal plates, bits of stone, rocks. That's different, cutting a water can in half and... Um, watering can and putting the breakfast in there. Well, when you're hangry, you end up doing crazy things, so. And then uh, the other thing, of course, is the two-stroke or even four-stroke motorbikes in Southeast Asia have been used for just about everything. And from one people, one person to five people, you can run an entire business. Yeah, I thought I'd seen everything, but this proves that only in Thailand you have not seen everything so I mean those bikes are not light so impressive very impressive <laughs> balancing a motorbike uh, the poor guy in front you know all he needs to do is just brake too hard yeah he's, he's done oh he's, he's done and it looks like they're driving quite fast as well well it's, uh, the photo has been taken out of a car they're probably doing a good uh, 40 or 50 at least Good luck to them. <laughs> and as we say, only in Thailand. All right, uh, that's the program. We're going to uh, say goodbye. We've got the weather coming up. I think we could preview it by saying rain. Yes. Well, what did you call it earlier? Drabby. Drabby. Weather. Drabby weather around Thailand. Thanks, Jay. Thank you, Tim. Thank you to Jason pressing the buttons. And thank you to you. And, of course, we've got all your comments coming up in our Tiger Bites program. And Jet will be around later with Thailand News Today. All on the Tiger. And uh, thanks to you for watching. We'll see you next time. Up in the capital today, we've got fair air conditions. 32 today, down to 31 tomorrow, and 25 on Saturday as a top. Bit of rain around, uh, but you might see a little bit of sunshine if you're lucky, down to the sandbox, and plenty of rain around today. Certainly a lot overnight, and more expected in coming days. Uh, basically overcast, and around 27 or 28 through the forecast period. To the northeast of Thailand, and we've got 31 degrees down to 26 by Saturday. A bit of rain around there as well, but basically clear skies. To the north of Thailand, and we've got fair skies, but uh, 32 is the top down to 31 over the next two days, down to 22 overnight, and yes, some rain as well. To the central Gulf Coast, and 30 is the top temperature today, down to 27 by Saturday. Very clear skies and down to 25 at night. Also some fresh rain predicted there. And to Chombri and Bang Lamung and Pattaya, we've got 29 at the top today, down to 27 by Saturday. Moderate air conditions, down to 25 overnight. And yep, some rain there as well.